Hi everybody, thank you so much for joining us tonight. My name is Kim Vidge and I blog at The Educator Spin On It where you take everyday opportunities and turn them into learning opportunities. Tonight, thank you for your patience. We're all trying to get us all together to join and I have three special um, volume friends that are here tonight. We have Janine from True Aim Education. We have Holly from Kids Activity Blog and many other things too. And Amy Green from... Um, what is it? Pounds for pennies. So I'm going to let each of you introduce yourselves and then we're going to start talking about what we love to do for summer with our kids and how we fit it all in. So Janine, go ahead and introduce yourself. Take everyday opportunities and turn them into learning opportunities. Tonight, Hi everybody, I'm Janine and I vlog at True and I hear a lot of feedback. I have four children and I vlog about um, family and finances and also um, lots of learning experience. So um, stop by train and check it out. I think somebody has the event page open. Yeah, so let's go ahead and make sure we've got everything closed up and if we're not talking, we can go ahead and use that mute button at the top that we don't have to do. Trying to turn my speaker down. <laughs> That's okay. It happens. It's late at night. We're all trying to get all of our buttons working right. Okay, Holly, you want to go ahead and introduce yourself? Sure. I'm Holly Homer, and I write Kids Activities blog with Rachel Miller. And Rachel and I wrote a book last summer actually. <laughs> At this very time we were in the middle of it and it's 101 kids activities that are the bestest, funnest ever and it's available in bookstores and it has 101 different things to do for summer. And Kim, I was also really glad to hear you pronounce your last name because I have never heard it. Like I've only ever read it. <laughs> so thank you for that. <laughs> You're welcome. It does, it's one of those names that you never see in English language. So that it is. Okay, Amy, you want to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Amy Green. I'm from Pounds for Pennies. And I vlog about um, things... Uh, Kids' parties, uh, craft ideas, and recipes. Well, as Holly mentioned, she um, has written an amazing book, and she here it is right here. We were so excited to get it in the mail recently, 101 Kids' Activities. And i excited because we've put together with the Moms Library an ultimate guide to summer. Janine, how many activities are on there right now on the guide? There's over 200. So it's pretty Over awesome. 100. I'm, yeah, it's and there's awesome. new things going up each every week. So go and check it out. <laughs> yes. And along with the guide, there's a special uh, giveaway that's going on with some amazing prizes that Janine worked really hard to put together for each of our readers um, for a chance to win. So I hope as you're watching tonight, make sure that you've taken the chance to, to enter the win. One of the things is um, Holly's book. and. Mm -hmm. Some other cool prizes within there. I think before we start, I'd love to, Janine, just if you have on the top of your head all those fun prizes that they can win, because yeah. it just it's amazing what you're able to put together. Okay, awesome. Yes, there is um, a four-person tent from LL Bean. There's also a kid craft, um, kid child size um, table and chairs with an umbrella for outdoors. Um, there's also three games from Simply Fun. They're all educational. And then, of course, um, Holly has generously donated a $100 Amazon gift card. So definitely go check those things out and, and sign up for that. Definitely. Well, before, as we begin, I asked each, each of them to come ready for some questions to answer tonight. And the first question I wanted to talk about was what is your favorite summer activities with your kids and if maybe we want to just go in that same row we went before with Janine and then Holly and then Amy. So Janine you want to start and tell us one of your favorite summer activities? Yeah, uh, my one of my favorite summer activities is of course water play. Uh, everybody loves it in the summer, it keeps you cool. Um, we love water balloons and there's some awesome ideas 
on the ultimate guide for water balloon play. Um, there's water balloon pinatas, there is um, water balloon and pool sensory play, just tons of ideas. So uh, make sure you go check out those water play. Um, that's my favorite. Yeah, um, I have three boys, um, ages 8 to 13, so water, especially when we live in Texas, so <laughs> going to the pool, we really go on a public pool tour through the, through the summer when we're there, just because, number one, just to survive the summer heat, but also every day I have to find something active to do with them or they will drive me crazy and they will kill each other, so not a good plan. So what we try to do is no matter where we are, we have something, at least one thing that um, that gets them out and doing something. Um, so right now we're on vacation in Colorado, which is much cooler, maybe 40 degrees cooler than home. <laughs> and so we went out um, walking and, and that kind of stuff, yeah, exploring really is what we do more than any sort of hiking. <laughs> so. That's so much fun. What part of Colorado are you in right now, Holly? We're in Winter Park right now. Winter Park, fun. My parents were up there in Colorado too. Amy, what's one of your favorite summer activities? Oh, you have to unmute your uh, microphone. We we love to spend time at the pool. We enjoy all kinds of water gun games, and we play a lot of water volleyball. And um, we also are going to Colorado next week, Holly. <laughs> <laughs> and um, we enjoy hiking in the mountains and um, getting away from our Texas heat also <laughs> and trying to enjoy some cool mountain activities. Mm -hmm. I think you both hit on a really strong point. Like we're down in Florida too where it's hot all the time <laughs> in summer activities, but it's still really important for our kids to be active and outdoors and having fun. So sneaking in water ideas, sneaking in early morning adventures is important and I also for us indoors you know with the sun you have to find lots of active things inside too so these are the times where we're building forts and coming up with mazes in the house or pillow activities and all those fun things that you probably remember as a child too so that's probably our favorite other than obviously water is I think anyone's go-to in the summertime too but really having access to maybe all those old sheets <laughs> yeah. to kind of let your kids transform the living room for the day. Um, so downstairs is in a massive fort right as you speak, mm -hmm. which is really funny that you'd say that, yes. It's, then, they, they slept in their indoor tent last night. So. <laughs> <laughs> and then hopefully they get lost in a book or two while they're there and all that. You know, I have to plug in my little teacher moment on it all, but mm -hmm. um, really setting up those moments for it too. So moving on from that, what are some tips for how you stay organized in the summer with what you're planning for the day and getting together with friends and how do you keep it all straight and also make sure you relax during the summer and not feel overwhelmed with your children. So Janine, you want to start? Yeah, sure. Um, we usually have um, fun days during the summer. So like designated days where we where we do something fun um, and we plan something out so like Mondays and Fridays are our fun days and we try to um, you know do something with friends or go to the park and things like that and I really like um, those free printable calendars that you can find everywhere there's one on um, buggy and buggy buddy and it's buggy and buddy mm -hmm. I really like theirs it's really cute it has like a beach theme um, and she kinda gives you some ideas on how to make um, the calendar a learning experience so I like that too and then um, three dinosaurs has a free printable calendar um, set so it's actually more of a homeschooling like learning opportunity but you can you know use it to schedule all your fun activities in and I like to give the kids a choice, so they'll each pick something to do um, on one of the days of the week. So that's a, a fun experience for them. We, I am not like a super scheduled person, so like when you're like, I don't know, and we homeschool during the school year um, just two days a week. They go to school three days a week and two, they're home two days a week. So that kind of forces me into some sort of schedule because they, ha I'm responsible to make sure they have stuff go, go back to school on. But when summer hits, it's like 
everybody just vegetates for at least the first week or two, <laughs> maybe three. And then um, out of necessity of like them like clawing at each other, um, I really try to set up at least one to two things a day that they know we're going to do or that we're going to get out of the house and do or that they get to choose. Um, it might be a board game, although it's better if it's a board game after they've been outside for a while. It goes much better. Um, but anyway, and since you know I work from home, and you know it's really helpful if I say you know I get up early and work before they get up anyway. But say you know hey 11 o'clock we're going to go do X Y and Z if you can let me work till then. And so that makes it a lot easier for them to see the light at the end of the tunnel and know that we actually are going to have a so, have something to do that's fun. Right. And Amy, how about with your schedule? Amy, do you have an answer to that? Um, some of the some of the things that we like to do is, um, I have a lot of different camps for my kids that I that they go to sometimes during the summer, and my daughter's a little bit older. She's uh, 12 years old right now, so she is really into sports. So I have enrolled her in some basketball camps and some volleyball camps, and she gets to go to that. So. I have to keep a calendar. We have a family calendar, and we try to keep everything organized on there. And we, I try to do doctor's appointments and all that kind of stuff in the summertime, so that we don't take away from school time. But um, they, um, we also do things like swim lessons and trying to get things that are outside of the house. Um, and for activities, I also use. I like to use a paper calendar and plan different crafts for different days. I try to do kind of theme weeks. So I have a four-year-old, so we'll do a dinosaur theme week, and that seems like oh, It looks like we're freezing up a little bit. <laughs> I want to go to our dinosaur week. That sounds really fun. I know. That sounds like fun. I want to know what other weeks there are. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, I will, I guess, talk um, while we get to freeze a little bit. Um, for I us, am, he loves track me. Of it all so I try to keep, hard. like, um, we went to SeaWorld. And so, he on the try to tie into an ocean theme week somewhere down the road. Very good. Can keep it enjoy learning during the summer. Okay. For us, we've got kind of the balance of all of you guys. What you've mentioned, and I know Janine, you talked about calendars. I love um, Allison from No Time for Flashcards has a fun calendar too for literacy, and Amy from uh, Teach Mama has a great activity kind of to get everything together for you this summer too. That are both free. Um, Right now, we're hosting a virtual summer camp with a virtual book club. So we've got themes going on each year, which are real fun each week. Excuse me, that are fun. Right now, we're in classic stories. Last week, it was transportation. So we try to do kind of ideas, themes per week at our house, too. Not always, but at least there's a set of books that we've checked out from the library that kind of fall in a theme, and we try to find things to play with that incorporate that or adventures. Like we have a trip to the zoo plan for next week because we're doing animals at the zoo. So all sorts of fun ways to do it. Um, now question to you guys, do you set a bucket list with your kids as you approach summer? I, I don't have a bucket list, but um, I do have like a tradition, like traditions that we do every summer. So we, we go to the mountains too during the summer, every summer, and then um, we go to the zoo, and there's just certain things that we like to hit, you know, every summer. So um, that's kind of what, uh, like a, a summer tradition list that we do. So Sounds I like love fun. that. That's really fun. Um, yeah. Now, like, it would stress me out <laughs> like, to have a list of things I was supposed to do. Um, so no, we don't. Um, but I am a really firm believer, which is really funny considering that you know, I write a blog about kids' activities and write a book about it. 
um, that I'm a real proponent of boredom <laughs> amongst children because I think it really fosters um, creativity and like independence and play. And so um, I, tr I, it's really funny, but that's one of it's one of my strategies in the summer is to kind of bore them into. Um, them occupying themselves and I think it's a real as long as you know it's balanced with some things that we do as a family and, and obviously things that we're out and doing you know outside and getting exercise I think it's I think it's okay for them to be bored occasionally. Yeah. It's important for them to be bored. It really is. It does foster a world of creativity and kind of open up that sense of being willing to think outside the box. My daughter's <laughs> at uh, camp this week for Camp Invention and it's really taking those opportunities and, and figuring out how you can make things work and you can't yeah. figure that out unless you've had the time to do nothing. <laughs> yeah. Not work on it. I, how about you, I Amy? Do you guys have a bucket list, list to work with? And I just felt like I was really stressed out trying to get everything done and crossed off of our list. So um, this year I am just have a few fun things that we want to do <laughs> and some are fun but I'm trying not to schedule it all out. Um, just trying to make sure that there's fun involved and um, not have just it just I just felt very overwhelmed last year. <laughs> I think just having those kind of set pieces that you know you want to fit in and you'll figure out how you're going to do it, but not stressing out about it. We kind of try to use the words play, make, learn, and go. And just as we choose things, what can we play with? What can we make? What can we learn and where can we go as we kind of make our decisions throughout the summer? Um, so that's kind of what we do. Uh, just curious, do you guys kind of have a, a typical schedule that your kids know you're going to do? I know, Holly, you mentioned you probably will have an outing during the day and follow up with a game when you get home, <laughs> which I think is great. Do you have any other kind of typical schedules that work well with kids and you feel the transitions work well for them? Yeah, um, you know, one of the things that is, and it, it's helpful that, like, it, this gets easier every year. Let me just, like, warn you, those of you with smaller children, because, like, what we do today is really not even close to what we were doing five years ago when, you know, everybody was toddler and preschooler. Because now, like, you know, they can, you know, they don't need that tending to all the time. And so, and I can, like, a big deal for us is to go out to breakfast and so like you know once or twice a week we there's a really the best restaurant for breakfast in the world is here in Winter Park Colorado so you know we've already been once and you know it's a big deal like that's you know we're planning our next trip to that and you know it's just such a simple thing but it's like it's like a family event and you know that will our whole day will center around that you know get started off right on that so you know I mean even taking kind of not not even traditional um, you know kid activities and using it as something that's just a family tradition and I know someone else mentioned those family traditions in the summer but I think that's super important I totally agree I really am really excited about those those older years. <laughs> 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 but we, um, I, I, since I homeschool, we do homeschool throughout the summer, but we do it a lot re more relaxed. So we'll just pick like one one subject to do um, on our three day three day um, schedule. So our three week schedule. And so um, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday for our school days, and we'll just we'll focus on like reading one day, math one day, and then another subject the other day so it'll be really really relaxed um, I also like the idea of having like a, a summer go bag and um, by that I mean like just a bag to get that has things in it where I can just get up and go do something because I'll see all these really fun things to do on Facebook and somebody's like oh I'm here and I want to do that and I never used to be able to just pick up and go and so having that that bag prepared really helped me um, just capture those opportunities. I love that tip. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have anything particularly that you keep in your summer go bag? Well, um, my four-year-old has just started reading and so for our schedule I try to make sure that we get reading done out of the way. We try to at least read one book before we start the day and then I also buy them they're called bridging workbooks and so I buy them 
both the older children and the my young, younger son and I let them do one page a day so that it at least helps with um, their keeping their learning and it's not really homeschool but um, they do at least do one page of work a day so that they don't lose anything over the summer and I found out that really helps them when the school year starts because they're almost ahead of everybody else um, and after that I try to schedule um, in the afternoon around 3 some outdoor activity time so either we will go to the park or we will go swimming or we will go do some fun activity outdoors um, but during the middle of the day I try to keep everything kind of low-key um, I don't have anything scheduled as but um, we do try to make treats and do other fun activities with the kids. I love it. You kind of got the system of how it all flows. I think we always try to take advantage of the summer and maybe cook a few extra things that maybe we wouldn't get to do, like a special snack or a special breakfast together or just kind of getting more hands-on in the kitchen just because we're not as rushed. and It's kind of fun that way to do it. Um, I think for us in terms of schedules, my kids kind of know we have certain outing days that we go out and days that we stay in just to kind of keep that balance. I love being able to catch up with friends that we didn't get to play with during the school year, especially, you know, you make that core group of friends as a mom's group and then they all start going to kindergarten and first grade and so this is really a chance for us to get together again and, and spend time with all those friends that we haven't seen in a while and probably hang out at the pool. That seems to be our hot <laughs> spot for, for hanging out. So they've all become real good swimmers over the years together. So it's fun and you can't pass up a good picnic in the middle of the day with your friends, right? <laughs> so anything that you guys are looking forward to this summer especially? I know you, Holly, you're already on one of your adventures this summer. <laughs> and Janine, you said you have some traditional places you go to. I'm just curious if you have a place that you always try to fit in um, yeah. during the summer. Yeah, we always go to the mountains where you don't get any cell phone reception, so nobody can bother us. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> um, so I can't be tempted to check the blog or anything like that. Um, yeah, and we just go hiking and ex let the kids explore um, and kind of let them be bored out there, but they're not <laughs> bored ever because there's so much right. to do. Um, so, we actually just went on the trip. We just just got back, and it's usually just a short weekend because I have a newborn and um, and a two year old, so it's a little bit hard to stay places long long term. <laughs> but um, we went hiking, and it's really funny because we when we go every year, you can just see the personalities change in what we do. So we did the same thing. We went hiking up to this really um, tall point. And my two and a half year old last year, um, my two and a half year old, she went all the way up and didn't complain at all. Um, and then this year she's four, or I'm sorry, this year she's three, and she started um, halfway through. She just sat down and would not move. <laughs> so she got worn out. I'm like, you did this fine last year, you know. So you see that your kids change if you keep doing the same things every year. You can just see the little changes that they go through and it's really fun. So fine. Yeah, we um we come back to the same place every year and so it's kind of, you know, we like you say, we explore the same places and it's funny how, you know, a favorite place three years ago is kind of like they're like, oh that's baby, you know, <laughs> which is super funny because I'm like, yeah, y'all are so old. Um, but we, so we always do like the the alpine slide and the mini golf and the, the maze and all that kind of stuff that's here and they have these really big giant board games everywhere like a big, like a life-size Scrabble and, and, and chess and stuff like that. So we play those outside at the, you know, in the mountain air which is nice but this year for the first time we're going to do the um, we're all skiers, so um, we're c very familiar with the mountain. But this time, we're going up the chairlift and coming down on bikes. So we'll see how that goes. <laughs> oh wow, that's adventurous, Holly. <laughs> <laughs> so me and the boys, we'll see how it goes. We'll see if we survive, or if I'm like broken up next time you see me. <laughs> that would do great. What a fun adventure. How about you, Amy? Do you have any special places you try to hit? Um. Well. Oh, 
So it looks like we froze up again. Poor Amy. <laughs> Janine's got a little one waving hi to us. Hi. hi. <laughs> you snuck in, huh? Oh, well, we lost her for a moment. Hopefully, it's kind of like our back. tradition because there she is. There she is. Um, I like the kids to experience the outdoors and. We lost her again. She's gone again. <laughs> I'm sorry, Amy. <laughs> For us, we always try to hit the beach as we celebrate. Go hike up the mountains and um, enjoy it. And I make sure all the kids have a little backpack, and they each have a flashlight and a whistle and water, so that if anything should happen, they're at least prepared and um, um, they can. I I feel a little bit safer knowing that we're going hiking in the mountains that they can still. Have fun. Right. And I think that's probably a tip all of us want to share with everybody is always make sure that your kids are safe first in all the adventures you're taking, whether it's a bike ride down the mountain. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have cats and helmets. Swimming in the pool. Just, you know, always, always keep your guard up because I, I think we forget how many incidents do happen in their summertime. So just... Keep your watchful eyes on those babies. I just want to plug in all these adventures are amazing. Just make sure you figure out a way to keep track of them with your kids at home so they don't forget about them. I have a 21-year-old, too, on top of my 7- and 3-year-old, and I'm really, like, saddened when I ask him, oh, don't you remember we went to blank? Be blank? No. Did you do this? No. I'm like, oh. So we're trying to be a lot more conscious with our daughter, who's 7, almost eight actually, of really making her create kind of books and kind of her own little scrapbooks of the adventures she's taken. So even if she doesn't remember them, at least there's a book that she's put together to try to, you know, remind her of all those adventures we took together as a family. Do you have anything that you guys do? We just take lots of pictures. <laughs> take lots of pictures. And there's also this um, really cool... Um, subscription program I think it is where they will print off your um, your phone pictures really inexpensively so you can you know my kids will take the phone and sneak in some pictures of their own and they're just so cute and I'll get that little booklet of pictures and just be going through them I'm like what is this picture you know and um, it's just it's just a really fun way to um, capture all those things that you've done in your phone you know so I like that um, option to do. Yeah, when your kids are older, you may not be doing that. <laughs> I get all sorts of crazy pictures on my phone that they like snuck in there, like, un un you know, intentionally. I'm like, thanks so much. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> kind of fun though too to see a vacation from your child's perspective. Yeah. Like, my daughter has a little. Um, Leap Pad oh. Ultra that she can do her own photos with. And it's kind of fun to see what I thought was really important, not one picture. And then, <laughs> you know, what she totally thought was fun and important, there's like 10 of them. So, um, you know, sometimes you have to stop and really think about what is your child enjoying and, and take that too and, and learn about it. So. Yeah, and I th I think that I mean I've been taking pictures obsessively of them since birth, which is part of the, part of the reason why blogging works so well for me. Um, but the um, one of the things that I've learned over the last few years is um, is I now like a lot of my family pictures are now taken with my phone because that's a lot less intrusive um, than my big old camera, and my kids don't mind it as much, um, and they also will like you say grab it and take some pictures of their own. Or, you know, I mean, it, it can be a way that is not so much like, hey, everybody has to pose so mom can get a picture, although I make them do that at least once a day. Um, so, but I think the legacy of this generation is going to be really amazing because we do have all those photos um, online, um, whether that be on Facebook or Instagram or, um, or just on, you know, in your computer that someday you, you have all those to look back on and, you know, like literally thousands and thousands and thousands more than any other generation ever had. Mm -hmm. Right. Do you have any tips on taking picture phones or phones with your? Um, I'm sorry, pictures with your phone. 
Yeah, I mean, if you've learned to touch, like, the, I think the color, about the, the light and dark balancing is the most amazing thing. Like, if you look in your phone, it's too light, then just t touch a dark place on the photo, on the, your screen, and it will switch it imme immediately. And you can actually, in some light instances, you can take a better picture on your phone than you can with your fancy camera, because you can get instant access to that other shadow feel. Oh, wow, cool. I think Amy's still a little frozen. So we'll I know, move. poor Amy. <laughs> well, well, as far as um, taking pictures, um, uh, we usually download the pictures right when we get home and we put them on our uh, computer and we get to relive those memories all year long and because our computer is in our living room and we have the wall, the screensaver is it recycles our photos. And so it's so much fun when the kids see, oh, mom, did you remember when we went here? And they'll go and they'll even go back a couple of pictures. Oh, look, that's me when we did this. And it's always so much fun to see them and remember and enjoy the times that we spent as family making memories. That's so fun. We have a, a little digital frame that does that too, that the kids get to use their own photos for. So it's super fun. Both of us are now having issues with our computers tonight. Well, as we end, I know we need to wrap it up. Do you have um, a special summer place that you'd like people to come visit on your site or maybe a Pinterest board um, to kind of just find ideas for summer activities? Yes, definitely. I have an outdoor activities board, so everything um, to do with anything outdoors. And then Mom's Library, we always are pinning um, themed um, posts. So any day of the year, if it's a if it's a um, celebration or holiday, we're always pinning over there on Mom's Library board. So stop by over there for lots of ideas. And I also have a, a specific um, summer activities for kids Pinterest board as well as um, a popsicle board because who doesn't need popsicles in the middle of the summer? I love it. <laughs> and then one of my other really favorite boards for summer is um, my Together Counts board. I'm a Together Counts um, ambassador. And what that is is all about healthy, active lifestyles for kids. And so there's just so many indoor, outdoor activities um, that will get the kids blood pumping <laughs> and the wiggles out um, because that's super, super important. We don't want to be raising a, just a generation that doesn't go outside or doesn't you know, exercise. So um, that has a lot of really fun places, um, things to do as well. Perfect. After we're all done, I think we'll all share the links to each of these resources on the event page too. For everybody to find easily. I'm trying to see if Amy's coming back with her. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I um, I do have a crafts for kids board, and it has um, all kinds of fun crafts and activities to do for kids all year round. Um, it's a group board, so I allow people to pin to it, and um, it has just a, a ton of different ideas that you can do. Perfect. All right, and we have a summer activities board that we plant, put things on. We also have an outdoor board, um, all sorts of things just for resources for summer and also a couple summer reading projects that we go on because I do want to see um, all of our kids reading during the summer. Let them get lost in a series or with an author. I think it's real important to just have books at their fingertips, not necessarily pushing it, but having it available for them. Um, to read over the summer and maybe if you're planning an outing to a special place stop by the library ahead of time and, and grab some books about it so they really know where they're visiting and can enjoy it. So I, I think that's it for tonight. Any last wisdom tips as we leave? No, just get Holly's book. Oh yeah. Uh, I want to share one of my really favorite um, well one of my favorite. I mean there's tons of them but one that I really like is the tin can jump. You can see it right here. It's a really active one. And I have, um, if you ever heard of the skippets, 
I have one of those, but they are really um, flimsy, and so they break really easy. And so I love this activity because it just uses things that you have around the house um, to get kids moving and and makes them think about how you know I would make my kids make it. So um, you know it makes it makes them you know try to to do it, and it's it can be educational too. So educational and active are my favorite activities. <laughs> I love that. Thanks so much, Janine, for that. Um, my one of my things that I would definitely say is that um, I think one of the things that us as parents sometimes forget is how much fun it is to play, and I, summertime is a really really good time to get connected back into that, and um, you know use summertime to pull out some of those old activities. A lot of the activities in the book are based on you know things that we enjoyed as kids, and um, so you get to relive those again. Yay, it's fun. So don't forget, because it's it's also a great, not only are you connecting with your family, but it's a great stress reliever, and it's, it's fun. It's fun to play, and we get to do it all over again with our kids. I love it. <laughs> I just have to say that Holly's, and there we lost me again, too. <laughs> My daughter opened up her book from the mail and kind of sat and planned out her summer looking at your book saying, <laughs> we're doing this one, then we're doing that one. And so definitely if you're looking for ideas, I would grab her book, 101 Kids Activities. They're the bestest, funnest ever. <laughs> you and Rachel did an amazing job putting that together. And Thanks. I think it's a true gift to many parents in terms of finding all those things that we used to do as kids and bringing them back again and then bringing the best of what's being created today and making it easy and fun to do with your kids. So thank you so much. You guys, thank you for being here, Janine and Holly and Amy. I think you have lots of great ideas to share with everybody so that we all have phenomenal summers with our kids that are memorable. Um, you only so have 18 of them, so we got to make them last and have them be important. All right. Well, thank you guys for being here tonight. Thank you. Thanks so much, Kim. <laughs> Thanks, Kim. All right. And we'll share all those links on the event page for you guys to find. All right. Thanks. Bye. Bye. <laughs>